Hello and welcome to the second part for Dominating Tyranno Builder Visual Novel Studio in 3D. Today we're going to talk about Blender and how you can export your animations and use them as actions inside Tyranno Builder, which will make it a lot better. Right now, this is a short demo in which you can see a skater and also the B. This B is the default B that Windows Viewer has. And I brought it here just to show you the main concept that we're going to be talking about today, which is to trigger actions inside the same model, okay? The format GLTB and GLTF, I'm sorry, and GLB have different uh, ways of working within Tyranno Builder, but they both do the same thing in the end, which is to export your model, give it the appropriate properties for light and textures, and also your animation tracks are going to be stored inside the model. Those are called actions, and you can call different actions inside Tyranno Builder using Tyranno Builder's code. So we have this character and also the bee they are both performing an idle well in this case this one is performing a flight uh, motion but if I click the game starts of course this is just text it will present to you whatever dialogue you want for the characters to be or to have and then when you reach this line if I click the screen shakes and they both take a secondary action in the case of this girl, she starts skating, and in the case of the bee, it stops and grows. So as you can see, you can define any kind of properties for this uh, character and also for the actions that they are going to take, and that is just fantastic. There are other 3D properties we will be exploring in the next videos, but for now, I just want to quickly show you how this is done so you can do it as well. So the first thing we want to do is to obviously create our character, rig our character. You can check out this card in the upper right side of the screen for more information about rigging. I rigged this character in Blender 2.83 and now I am using it in Blender 3. So it doesn't make a difference because what you are going to need to do is to create let me go to edit mode for this armature so you can see it what you need to do is to obviously rig the arms everything right here you can do that following the guide that I previously showed but the most important thing that you have is this bone which does not contain any kind of transform and that bone is called the root this is very important because this is the bone that is going to drive your entire animations. This is the bone that is going to be responsible for the location of your object in the 3D world. Whatever you export this, that is going to tell the world how to locate your character. Next thing that we need to check is the size. As you can see right here, my model is a lot bigger. It's huge. It's humongous. Okay, so let me just quickly show you how this should have been. Like you see here, there's a square with one box here, another box here, another another box here. This is one, um, if we can say it's a one meter, okay? One meter. And this is the area that your model should occupy. So let's quickly do this. I don't think I can do this right now. Uh, maybe if I go by 3D cursor. Yeah, here we go. So your model should be around that kind of size okay one unit I'm going to alt Z and if you send this scale into Tyranno Builder it's going to pick it up really huge it's going to appear like this huge okay and you also have camera clipping on Tyranno Builder so you need to be aware of that okay let's get into actions for those of you who don't know uh, you can also check this other video that I have here on the top right corner Make sure to, to follow that to understand a little bit more about the NLA and the Action Editor. So I'm going to go into the Dope Sheet and then I'm going to switch into the Action Editor. In here, we're going to see different new buttons, okay? Push Down and Stash. And also, every time you create a new animation, it's going to be 
this space where you're going to name that new action. So right now if I open this, I can see that I have a f an F skating. That F means stored or fake user stored. And it says that it's going to remain with my file no matter what I do with it. But idle is not. So how do you use that fake user? You just push here and now you also have the F besides the name of the action and that will ensure that whatever you do with this um, action script or this action animation it's going to be always saved inside the blender that's what we want all right so here in the action editor you can choose whatever you're going to do to export your animation of course you need to give it a name and once you do that you need to push down your animation in my case idle is active and if I push down click here that is going to automatically create a channel which I think it's called uh, NLA channel or something like that and it's going to need it's going to require that you named your NLA track this is the name that is going to be exported it doesn't matter how you name your action here blender is going to recognize whatever it exports while the name of the NLA track is here so if this is called idle like such make sure that your name matches so it doesn't matter how you export it you know that the idle track will contain the idle action so that's pretty clear right here I have another channel NLA channel which is called skating and this one contains an action clip called skating you can also check it out here on the NLA tracks skating if you open it you see that I have the skating action over here and of course the idle track contains you can see the icon there the idle track contains the idle action marvelous so how do we export this first of all press B select your mesh plus your your um, armature Please don't forget that you need to add this root bone without any transform and it needs to be called root. And once you have that, you can come here into file, export. You're going to come here into GLTF. And I did test I did test with both formats with GLB, which you can find right here. GLB and I also tested with GLTF separate files okay and they both work both methods work so as long as you leave everything by default you don't need to change anything here maybe except by include just selected objects in case you have camera or other things in your scene and you're only interested in exporting your character plus the armature and of course in include you can mark selected objects but other than that everything is self-explanatory and it's also active by default okay even shape keys they are going to be ex exported and also the animation it's going to always group by NLA track so I'm going to target the scalar GLTF I will export it I will not do that on camera and once I do that I'm going to come into my project like we spoke last time my project name is called 3d new ideas i'm going to come inside data others this folder 3d you need to create it on your own and once you do that you need to create all of these on your own as well because they do not exist inside model i will place the skater folder and inside the skater folder i exported the textures the bean and the gltf file Next, what you're going to do here in Tyranno Builder, let me stop the demonstration. What you're going to do here in Tyranno Builder is to use this code. I will go through this step, one step at a time, okay? So the first thing we want to do is to uh, 3D init the scene. Remember, you don't have visual controls here, so you need to code them in yourself, okay? Every time you do that, you need a Tyranno script. So you can just click here and drag it and drop it here. 
Now every time we start a 3D scene, we need to declare 3D in it. That tells Tyrano that we're going to start working on the 3D space and therefore it's going to expect 3D tags. Where are those 3D tags? Well, before I forget, uh, you have the opportunity to review if your GLTF or GLB files have mistakes. For example, I'm going to grab this entire scalar folder. I'm going to come here into this URL and then I'm going to drag it and drop it over here. It's going to load and it's going to tell you right here that you only have one warning, okay? So there's there's one node, apparently, bone nine, number 84, that is not bind. But that doesn't matter because right now all I care for is to roll my mouse wheel, right mouse button, left mouse button, middle mouse button, right mouse button. Alright, so we have her right there. So as you can see, the animation play, plays back from this timeline. So we have 250 frames and inside those 250 frames we have shape animation for her blinking. So you can see right here she's blinking. So that works. That works first try. And then you need to come here into animations and if you open this you will see different actions. So the key action is the very first action that it has which is basically the, the, the main timeline that we have right here. To be understood the blinking now we have the idol if I click on idle right there she is going to start performing the idle and she's not going to blink because idle does not contain a blinking animation but if I activate this one as well she's going to blink and then she's going to also do the idle that's cool and last but not least we have the skating and once I activate that I previously animated her so that she will skate okay so you can see her skating and her pose returns to the idol so after idol comes skating and you can also see the morph targets there let's let's place her on idol once again let's play with the eyes so you can see it's it, it's an immediate response that's very cool so those are the only two parameters that we originally had in Blender as well. You can see I close R and then I close L. Those two drive the blinking. I used to have a bone driving the blinking but it doesn't matter. Um, you're going to get an error. Okay. Uh, whenever you have drivers in Blender, bone drivers driving a shape key, you're going to get errors at the time of export to GLB or GLTF files. So please, please, please save an editable file with your drivers and then you can save another file switching off all the connections, all the drivers. You're not going to be using that and the Kronos exporter does not understand how to interpret those things. So you will get a, a serious error and you will not be able to export your character. Alright, so that was it. Let's go for the next line. In the next line, we have this code, which is called 3D Scene. And now we're going to talk about the light, specifically the light ambience. This one is set to 1 for light intensity. 2 is overblown. So if I set here into 2, you're going to see that the colors are overblown, okay? So this is max max value brightness. So we don't want that. We only have to put one. Now the tone map refers to the kind of color correction that we're going to be applying into the scene. And how do we know which one to use? Because if we come here on the on the tags, you need to you really need to work with Tyranno Builder open and your tags open like I am doing here. So right now in the 3D scene, like we were mentioning before, we have the tone map. And this one says that it has different parameters. For example, linear, rain hard, uncharted 2, Cineon, and ASICS, ASUS filmic. Now all of these are color correction LUTs, L-U-T-S, LUTs, and that is going to be applied to your 
entire scene and shaders. So in our case, we don't want to use any tone mapping, so we can just leave it like this, double quotations, or type the word no. All right, that was it. Now we have a 3D scene and also we have a lit environment. Let's adjust the model for the background and this 3D model new. Okay, that's the next command. And then we say name modular environment. And this modular environment, like we saw in the previous video, is inside the directory, which is targeted by the command storage equals and then the actual file. In this case, modular underscore environments scene GLTF. And now that we have created the model, we need to show the model. So we apply 3D show, okay, 3D show, and then we identify whatever we're going to show. We're going to give it positions X, Y, and Z. Okay, that's why you separate those values with commas, those coordinates with commas. Then we also need to give it a rotation and also give it a scale. Now, if all of these are, are all the same, you can delete all of this and just leave one single scale, which will represent all three at the same, at the same time. So that's up to you. All right, that was the background. Next, let's go for the character. In my case, I'm loading two characters. So notice I'm going to be using the same commands for both of them. First of all, I need to load or create the new model. Then I will need to assign it a name. In our case, that is going to be B. Then we need to tell it for the very first time where is it going to find the location of that file. Where is that file? That is relative to your project. Please remember that your project had this uh, 3D folder right here. And from there, inside model, everything that you target here is related to that. That's why we are only um, going into one level deep navigation from the folder B into the B GLB file. From there, we want to say that the first time that this thing loads, we want the B to take this action. So I'm going to be opening the B file now so you can take a look at it. And switch here to shaded view. I think th I think this is cycles. No, it's on Eevee. Perfect. So as you can see, the name that you name your NLA tracks is very important for the GLB file to work. And that is that it has a lower score, an underscore, for the name of the model and then the action itself. And here you can see the action has a different name. It's called B idle skeletal dot one. However, we have another NLA track which is B Hoover. And a third one which is called B takeoff land. Now, how do we know what any of this does? I'm going to be starring this one and then I'm going to be playing it back. So you can see that the animation is exactly the same as in the video game. So right now the, the bee starts to fly, okay? It's the bee taking off and then landing again. Marvelous. The star is a way to isolate the track plus the action. Now I'm going to unstar it. Now I'm going to star or isolate bee hoover. So if I, I click play, the bee is going to be hoovering into this looping action of 45 frames. Finally, B idle. It's going to last for around 250 frames. And as you can see, the B right there just does a slight movement to represent that it is um, doing its natural biological things. You know, it's alive. That's what I want to say. Cool. So, B idle, B hoover, and B takeoff and land. Those are the actions that we're going to be using. And in our case, the very first one that we were calling, it's called P takeoff and land. Also, we're going to show it. Now we have invoked it, and now we're going to show it. So 3D show, name B. That's the target. That's the model we want to show. Next, we're going to give it P 
position, rotation, scale, and now we can call a motion. In our case, be idle. Okay? Underscore B underscore idle. Please make sure that you always have your brackets closing because if you don't, if you leave this like this, you will probably miss the chance to make this work. So in order for this to work, always make sure that you close brackets. Okay, so the B is loaded. It's loaded into this position. Let's load the new model. 3D model new. Again, the command. We're going to call this model Skater, and therefore we use name equals Skater. Now we're going to tell it where it lives in our project related to Skater, the Skater GLTF. Notice how this one is a different format than the other one, GLB or GLTF. And you can also use, I think, FVX. I have not tried it yet, but you can use OBJ. Okay. Anyways, so we are going to start with this model using its own motion, which is called idle. So we put that inside quotations like this and then closing the bracket. Okay, super important. Once we have defined a new model, we need to place it on the 3D world using 3D show. We're going to target skater and that is going to be in this position and with this scale and also it's going to be skating okay so you will ask Mr. Schiller if you have be, be idle but you start with B takeoff and none of that happens on the scene what's going on why doesn't why doesn't it trigger well that's a that's an interesting question and that is exactly what we need to take care of what kind of action can we do with the novel so that we can trigger it will not automatically just switch because you have already started an action and then you need to stop that action and then start a new one and that's why we can make the mistake that if you start off by naming your object and declaring its very first action it's most likely that between this command and this other command right here you need to put a 3d stop action or you need to change the, the kind of trigger and we're going to explore that anyway so we have all of that now we need to adjust the current position related to the scene so we're going to use the command 3d camera and now we're going to tell it this position in our previous video you can see it right here on the upper right side of the screen in our previous video, we showed how we can debug or take the coordinates in the world, copy them, and then paste them here in our script so that the camera will always start or can be animated from one location to another automatically with those coordinates. And now we're going to change the motion finally with 3D motion name, B motion, B takeoff, blah, blah, blah. But we have this diagram script here, then we show the text. Which one is it? It's this one that we have created, which has this short dialogue. And once you finish that dialogue, a new command enters, which is quake. And you have different parameters here to know how you can shake the screen. That's why it's called quake. Immediately after that, immediately after this has been completed, and the quake has been completed, then it's going to call Tyranno script again. And it's going to tell it, you know what? Now we are going to use a new 3D motion. On this target, the name it's B. Name equals B. And he or that object has a motion called the B idle motion after we quake. And the same thing goes for skater. We're going to declare that we're going to use a 3D motion on this specific name equals a skater object and this specific motion that that object has. In our case, it's going to be motion equals skating. But Mr. Schiller, there's something I don't like. The B is right in the center of everything and they are both occluding each other. Is there a way to move the B? I don't have any controls or tools how do I do it? How do I do it? It's 
very easy, we're going to debug, which means to receive information from your visual transformations in the viewport. And for that, we're going to come down here after the quake has happened, and then we're going to place the command 3D debug, 3D debug because we're going to work with a with an object, 3D debug name equals B. That means that we're going to be debugging the B. The B is going to give us tracking information and location. So let's go click on there, click there, click there, click there, the shake. Then the B stays there. And now we can start moving. You can see that this activated the 3D object for the B model. So I'm going to be moving this with left mouse button, with middle mouse button, I think that's for zoom, yes, and then right mouse button. Let me place this over here. Whoops, too much. Over here, again, over here, maybe I'm going to place it there. And you can see also the scale, so let's roll the mouse wheel and you can you can scale that little B. That's good. That's great. So we have all the information we need, and now we're going to press this button to copy it. Okay, we have copied this, and you can press this to come back to the normal game. But in our case, we're going to close that. We're going to go back into Tyranno Builder, and now we know where that B is going to be set. Okay, so in our case, we don't need this anymore. We already debugged it. But we want to place that over here, right after the 3D motion name, because we're placing that object into world space. Now, if you remember, whenever you declare something, you're going to show it, and then you're going to name it, and after that, you get all of that. So we can integrate those two things with one single command. So let's try that. Let's. Let's grab all this, or rather, let's grab all of this. And then we're going to paste it down here so we can keep track of things. And then 3D show name B, yes, but in this case, we're going to take all of these coordinates. We're going to replace them here. Like such, Control V. And then we know that B is going to go into idle position, right? Yes, because we have 3D motion name, B motion idle. So let's comment that with a semicolon, semicolon. I'm going to place two. You only need to place one, but I'm going to be placing two. So 3D show name B in this position with this motion. Let's see if it works. I'm going to save it, preview the scene. We get to the scene, the bee flies from the center of the screen, we already know that. Left mouse, left mouse, we get the quake, and the bee immediately is shown over there, and it's still and it's flying and taking off action. So just like we said before, we may probably need to place this down here, because we're going to tell it that that object B is going to change its motion over here why didn't it change it over here because we specifically are targeting the motion for that um, command after we have positioned it into the world okay so we have B idle B idle and targeting this action let's see how it goes from the beginning new game we get the dialogues we get the quakes and then the bee kits over there and sure enough it just to stay on the idle position all right so that's very easy thank you very much if you have any questions please make them in the comment section below okay so that was the code i know it kind of was it kind of was a little bit longer than expected but now if you play the game you're going to see your model and ready to play your adventure if you click there that's a dialogue dialogue number two dialogue number three now we're going to get the quake we get the quake and both of them immediately 
go into new actions. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Tyranno Builder, and we started to integrate Blender with this, which makes it more exciting for you to create new video games or visual novels inside Tyranno Builder. My name is Pierre Schiller, and I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you very much.